This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now we've seen the HLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP in action, and we've seen how useful they are as functions to pull in data and help complete sheets, and really to speed up, which is what Excel is about, making life a lot quicker and easier, and hopefully reducing errors. Now, here's an example that we used earlier. This is actually in the VLOOKUP missing data sheet. And at the moment, it looks fine. It takes the destination that we've typed in here. In the mileage, it runs across to the destination table, finds Washington, brings the mileage, returns it back to here, and everything works fine. When it doesn't work fine, it's either when we don't have a destination completed. If, for example, on the 4th, we haven't been anywhere yet, or we actually didn't go anywhere, so I remove Washington, Suddenly, I get some errors, hash NA. I will also get errors if I try to type in a destination that actually doesn't exist in the lookup table. See, I get NA. So I need to be able to effectively trap those errors and not display them because it makes my expenses claim now not work. The total isn't working. The grand total isn't working at the bottom. Instead of just simply carrying out the VLOOKUP, I firstly need to check whether carrying out the lookup will produce an NA. So in order to do that, I go back to that original first formula and put an if in. Now we've already seen how if works. It's equals if open brackets. The logical test, well, I need to test whether actually carrying out this produces NA. Well, there is a little function called is NA. So is NA open brackets and then to the end of the VLOOKUP, all of my VLOOKUP. So it's doing a test on this VLOOKUP. So it effectively carries out the VLOOKUP and says, is the result NA? If so, then what would I like to appear in the mileage? Well, a zero. That way the formulas can carry on working down the rest of the sheet. However, if it's not NA, so it does actually return a value, then what I want it to do is actually carry out that VLOOKUP. So let's highlight that bit of the formula, copy and paste to save me retyping, and then close off the if. So just as before, the if has three parts, equals if, open brackets. My criteria, which is the whole of that, my criteria is to carry out one function on another function to see whether the result of it is NA, not applicable. If so, then this happens, and it just types a zero onto the screen for the mileage. Otherwise, it goes ahead and carries out the VLOOKUP return, now that appears to have no effect on the first one because Washington is in the table. But if I then replicate that formula down, where there is an issue, I didn't go anywhere, on the fourth, I get a zero in the mileage. Where I type a destination that does not exist in the destination table, I get a zero in the mileage. Which means my expenses claim now does not look messy. And as soon as I sort out these two NAs, these totals will work, as will the grand total. So we need to do exactly the same for the parking. So we go into the formula, equals if, open brackets, is NA, I'm going to run that around the whole of that VLOOKUP. So is doing this VLOOKUP producing a not applicable result? If so, again, put a zero in the parking. Else, so otherwise, go ahead and carry out the VLOOKUP. And then close off the if, return again, no effect on that first row because Washington's there, but as soon as I replicate that down, we then end up with zeros here where I have no value being looked up, which produces NA, and I have New Jersey being looked up, which doesn't exist. So the last thing there is to do the same for the lunch, equals if, open brackets, is NA around the whole VLOOKUP. So if the result of that VLOOKUP is not applicable, then we'll return a zero, otherwise, will return the actual result of the VLOOKUP. Close off the if, return, and replicate down. So by using the if statement and the isNA function, we can check to see whether the value we're looking up, whether there isn't a value to look up, actually produces a result. If not, then we can place something else. And in this case, we've placed zeros. The reason that I've placed zeros in is that those zeros will then feed into this subtotal here which will then feed into the grand total there and won't offset or make any errors or break the spreadsheet if I don't go to too many places. So I can wipe out a whole set of destinations there and it just sees zeros on the sheet rather than NA, 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 which is rather messy. 
So if you start to see NAs in your lookups, whether they're VLOOKUPs or HLOOKUPs, then you'll find that this is a tremendous way of effectively removing them from any calculations by running an if that firstly checks the result of your VLOOKUP to see whether its result is NA, is producing a not applicable result. If it is, then output a value that makes sense to the rest of the formulas. Now you might not have to output a zero, you can output an empty cell perhaps, as long as that in itself doesn't cause any further errors in other calculations. In this sheet here, outputting a zero is the perfect thing because it places a zero into then any further results of calculations. If it's not NA, we end up in the else part of the if, and then you can run your VLOOKUP as normal, really. So that's capturing NA results for a VLOOKUP, making the formulas much more smooth and the spreadsheets much tidier and less prone to errors.